Change during power? No. So that's a safe 25 right there. Right up here. What else do we have in this problem? What's, what else is going on? What else we got? Yeah. Speed of this person. Okay, well, I need a person in the first place. So let's do that. What should I label about the person? Their height, right? Is their height changed throughout the problem? No, they're always five feet. So those two numbers are safe. Uh, Such a speed in which the person walking. That's absolutely, you need to uh, handle that somehow. Um, but perhaps there's more stuff in the light. Don't be shy about labeling your stuff, right? What else might be? Uh, there seems to be these questions about shadows and such. How do I take care of that problem? Okay. The shadow. Okay, what else what else should I label here? It still does seem a little bit fair. Okay. Right, the six feet from the but is this person always sixty feet from the light pole? That changes as the problem goes, right? Because this person's moving them away from the pole. So actually, let's call this X. This is the distance from here to here. X represents how far uh, whoever this is. Oh, what else maybe should I lay down? Does anybody see this person's shadow? Isn't, isn't this the shadow in front of the moon? Well, let's call this S for shadow. You're always better to overlabel rather than underlabel, right? Because if you overlabel, you can just ignore stuff. So I've got my 25 foot tall here. Got that. I've got my five foot tall person in here walking away from the light in a straight line. Huh. Where, where's this four feet per second? Listen. Very good. When the person is walking, where do they change? They're changing their distance from the pole, right? So I'm going to reflect this as the x t is equal to four. Everybody, I think I've done. 
Publicize ourselves. Uh, in part one, what is being asked? How fast is this person's shadow lengthening when the person is 60 feet from the pole? So I need it. This is some nice English here. I need to reinterpret this mathematically. Person's shadow length, what is that? Yeah. That's Very good. That's what we're looking for. How fast is the shadow length? How, how much does that change? Okay. Uh, the SCP win. When, when the person is 60 feet from the ball. So interpret that. X is equal to. Everybody agree with that assessment? That's what we're looking for, number one. Okay, how about number two? How fast is the tip of the shadow moving? The tip of the shadow is right here. How fast is this moving down the x axis? Uh, you know what? I'm going to overlay this again. Let me call this entire distance. That is x plus the shadow. Let me call it z. What are we looking for now? The Z. At the same Everybody okay so far? Two questions. All righty. Well, now we're we'll actually trying to do this problem. Uh, I know what the X to T is. I want to know some stuff that happens when X is 60. And I'm looking for the S to T. So it looks to me like I need some kind of equation that has X's and S's, right? Anybody got any This is a right triangle. I will tell you in these kind of problems, it's always going to be almost always going to be. Law of cosines, or in this case, the Pythagoras scale. I guess it could be law of sines, uh, same thing. But law of cosines for single triangles. Now, I don't know much about this hypotenuse except for bread, right? And so I'm thinking single. Would everybody agree that little triangle is similar to the whole thing? So, so if I were to do this, S is 5, you know, 57, 40. S plus X is to 25. Right. This to this is the whole thing to four. Now I can simplify this really nicely. Let me walk up both sides of this equation by 25. So I get 4s is x, right? Now, I think of it as x. 
four. Four. Yes. Let's well, see what are we looking for. I'm going to guess. Hey, so let me rewrite it this way. Yes, it is what we're looking for, part one. Uh, so what is it? That is cool. So this person's shadow is lengthening at one foot per second. By the way, there's something interesting in this problem. When did when was it that we cared about when the shadow was there? Well, they're 60 feet away, right? Where did I use the information? That uh, you were 60 feet away from the pole. You were right not to answer because he never used it. What conclusion did you draw from this? This is how fast this person's shadow is lengthening, no matter how far away they are. From the light. It is always growing one foot second. Doesn't matter whether one foot away, 20 feet away, 60 feet away, or a mile away, as long as they're walking at four feet per second, that's how fast their shadow is growing. So sometimes you'll see this. And it's it's interesting when you're doing engineering, STEM, or whatever, this information here is sparkless. You don't need it. I don't think we're going to need it in part two. Any questions on that stuff? Okay, let's look at part two. Okay, how do we find the Z case? What is Z? I just wrote Z on there to make clear what the question was being asked. What is Z actually? It's X plus X. And the derivative is linear in the sense that the derivative of this plus this is the derivative of this, dx to t, ds to t. What is dx to t? It's four feet per second. What was ds to t? We found that in part one, one feet per second. So the shadow is cruising down the sidewalk at five feet per second. And this makes sense, doesn't it? Because the person, every time the person moves, the person's shadow is, the beginning of the shadow must move to four feet per second, right? Because every time the, per, the person's going four feet per second. And while the person is going four feet per second, that shadow is growing at one. So really this, this is reflected right here. It's how fast the person is walking plus how fast the shadow is growing. Shadow is growing this fast, the person is kicking it down the sidewalk that fast. There you go. Any questions on this? Okay. Yes, I think that's my question. It's like, we're going to come up with some questions. 
are we directing this? We're trying to keep this in. Well, like I said, when you see triangles, you should be thinking two things and make it similar triangles or baggers is there or long coast. I'll do a long coast. How many remember what a long coast is? How many of you remember this? Okay, that's all you need to know. He's a lot of coast. Um, and make a long sign. Let's look at another one. Um, how many of you have ever seen this happen? Uh, I want to talk about this problem and then I'm going to talk about the flaw in that. A 13 foot ladder is resting. A straight part of the wall. It begins to slide or at least at the base. It begins to slide at constant. How fast is the top of the ladder? Sliding down the ball. When uh, okay, a thirteen foot ladder resting against. All straight wall, the base begins to slide. How many of you ever seen this? Like a ladder is going to slide, right? Well, it begins to slide at a constant two feet a second away from the wall. And of course, I'm like, assuming that the ladder stays attached to the wall, so the ladder slides down like this. How fast is the top of this ladder moving down the wall when the top of the ladder is five feet away? Yeah, lots of words. Let me try to sort this out again. Draw a picture first. Okay, so here's my long straight wall. And here's my ladder. Now, what should I be? Okay, so what, what what should I stick on the ladder? Thirteen, right? Everybody agreed that throughout this problem, this ladder always thirteen feet, never changes. So the the length of this red thing here, let's just say thirteen. What else should I lay? In fact, oftentimes I just say what's changing is the problem. What changes is the sun. Higher sides of the from the floor, which for convenience sake is to do this. What else maybe should I lay I agree. Right. In fact, that's important too because of this. I think this is about all we're going to need here. Let me try to dig some more information now. 13 foot line. Got it. Base slides at two feet per second away from the wall. So what is uh, what is that? Right, but can you put this in terms of the math and the, the labels that you have? Two feet per second. What's what's changing? So, yes. 
That is correct. So, as the slider uh, slides at two feet per second, the base slides away. That means the X is changing, right? So, I have the X T is always two feet per second. So, how about my quest? It's being asked of us. How fast is the top of the water? Yeah. Very good. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? So we're looking for the change in Y with respect to time. Uh, when you said five feet, can you be more specific? With what is five? Okay, so in terms of my picture, why is this five? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this, this question and then I'm gonna go back and specifically and criticize. Uh let's see. Got some information about the XDT. I'm looking for the YDT. This is what we're trying to figure out. I know something about why. Looks like I need an equation here that involves variables X and Y. Anybody see anything? That'll give me an equation that involves X and Y. What kind of triangle is this? Right triangle. And so the is the same. Is 13 squared, which is 116. Okay. Now, take the derivative of this. What's the derivative of x squared? Yes. This thing, same principle, right? And the verb 169, I don't know what. Now, let me kind of develop the formula here. I can sort of cancel the twos if I like, and I get y. By the way, we're looking for the YDT. Can somebody tell me what you expect about that answer? Should be positive or negative? Should be negative, right? Because think about this problem the ladder sliding, the bottom sliding away from the wall. So the top of the letter sliding down the wall, is that making Y bigger or smaller? Making Y smaller, so the Y to T should be negative. We see this show up here. And so I get actually the Y to T is minus X, the X to T over Y. Right. Now, to finish this off, let's think about what we need here. This is what I'm hunting for, so I don't know that this time. The XDT I know, it's always two. And Y I know, 
is five, but I don't seem to know X. Oh dear, oh dear, what will I do? I don't know what X is. Exactly, very good. So we know we know what y is, right? This equation will give us the x. That's exactly right. So let's go back to the well. So we have five squared. And so actually what I get is y squared. 1.4, and so I get y is 4. So now I know everything. I know x and the y, and I know the x and the z. This is negative. What was x? It was 5. Uh, oh, I see what I need X and Y is fine. So I just said the wrong letter. Um, X squared plus five squared is 169. So X squared is 144. So it's X. Thank you. Again, so that's minus 12. The x and t was two feet per second, and y was five. So this is minus 24 fifths feet per second. It's like 4.8. Uh, sort of makes sense, I think. And uh, notice that this y uh, you might be negative, indicating that it's sliding down the wall as it should. So I've got an extra credit question for you to think about. Was this um, anybody want to criticize this? Let's go back to this formula. Anybody want to I mean, the math I did was right, but there's something that this formula can't always hold. It's, it's probably fine where we evaluate the problem, but as the tip of the ladder, as it slides further and further out and the ladder gets closer to the floor, it can't work in the That's right. Notice the x dt is always two, right? And what's happening to x is slash like that. X is getting closer and closer to 13. So what here on top is getting very close to like negative 26, right? What's y getting close? Zero. So that means this is getting very, very large negative. At some point, if this is always true, the tip of that ladder will be going faster than the speed of light. Right? And it's that's ridiculous, right? Uh, has anybody ever seen what happens when a ladder slides like this? Ooh, let's do some in-class experiment. This is not a very good experiment. Uh, what happens when this thing down? <laughs> At some point, it was no longer an accident wall. There were, that, that was a big assumption that I had with the problem. Is that the tip of the ladder was attached to the wall with all points down, and that the bottom is always moving at two feet per second? This can't happen. So, here's my extra credit problem. You want to think about some things. At some point, the ladder has to pop off the wall. It has to happen. You've all seen this happen, right? The ladder slide down. It gets kind of chaotic at the end. At what point must that ladder top of the ladder? So, see if you can figure that out. Okay. <clears throat> okay, questions on that. Okay, let's do a problem. 
Um, let's say, so, okay, so I want you all to help me out with this. Uh, the minute hand of the clock is 12 inches, and the hour hand is 6 inches. Okay, uh, hands on it. Uh, how fast is the distance between the two? Our hand. Change. And so you've got clock that's got a foot long, uh, minute hand and six inch hour hand. How fast is the distance between the tip of the minute hand and the hour hand changing at eight o'clock? So let's draw a picture. I'm going to draw this at eight o'clock, and I'm going to keep in mind that it's not always eight o'clock. That looks like about eight o'clock. Think it is. Uh, what else should I lay along? So, length of each hand, that doesn't change, does it? Right, so I'm going to be safe on that. Six, 12. Where else should I put on it? Sometimes it helps to look at what person's asking um, before we actually put it in. This is asking something about the distance between tips, right? So that suggests to me that somehow I should. Measure the distance on this. So this is here. I'm going to call this a distance. Uh, what else should I make my convenience? There's something else that actually changes that I, I probably shouldn't. It, it's, as, as time goes on, uh, so part of the fun, there's something else that changes. But what is that? Yeah, that, the minute thing, but what really makes a difference is how they change relative. Uh, what is that? Because that's changing, isn't it? Now, let me give you a little bit of a distance. How fast is the distance when you tip of a minute and an hour and change? Wes. Uh, what are we looking for here? What's being asked of us? 
Correct. And what? At a plot, he recouched that in terms of stuff we got on the picture. In particular, he recouched that. Eight o'clock, what is the value of theta? At nine o'clock, what would the value of theta be? Nine degrees, everybody agree with that? What about at eight o'clock? Eight degrees plus another 30 degrees, right? Because each each one of these between the numbers is 30 degrees. Everybody agree? Because it takes three of them to make 90. Right? <clears throat> Actually, it doesn't really matter if it's eight o'clock. It just matters if the angle is. The theta is how many degrees? 120 degrees, and I like radians. So that's going to be too high. So, just from putting my eyeballs on this, I need an equation that involves both D and theta. I'm going to draw the law cosine for you. So, we have. Any triangle, uh, plus A, B, C, and the angle opposite C is theta, then that C squared is A squared plus B squared minus 2 to the AB cosine A. How many of you all have seen that at some point in your class? Okay. Remember, this is. By the way, what happens when theta is 90 degrees? If I remember what the cosine of 90 degrees is. So the cosine of 90 degrees, the cosine of power two is zero, right? What happens when theta is 90 degrees? There's no time for that. The right triangle, everybody agree? And if theta is 90 degrees, that means this piece is gone. We get the Pythagoras system. So the law of cosines is a generalization of Pythagoras theorem. If you take the special case where the angle is 90 degrees, you get the Pythagoras system. Everybody understand? Okay, so let's apply this to this particular situation. I have d squared. Is equal to six squared plus twelve squared minus two times six times twelve cosine of theta. Let me clean this mess up a little bit. Uh, let's see, that's thirty six and one hundred forty four is one hundred and eighty. Uh, minus 144 cosine of theta. Now, we're almost going to do a little bit of a tricky part of the problem. But at this point, let us go ahead and take a look at it. Okay, what's the derivative of uh, d squared? Good, 2d, capital D. Let's see, what's the derivative of this message here? Derivative 180 is zero. 
Right, because the root cosine negative sign fills up negative. Uh, and I'm looking for E thing. So let me let me get a formula for it. Cancel two vowels, let's go seven two sine theta over D. Um, all I gotta do is play in numbers. Right. So we make this operational, I need to know what theta is. Well, I got theta. It's root one third, it's power three. So I'm good to go here. But I don't seem to have value B e and theta. Okay, DZ. How are we going to get D? Right, go, let's go back to the well. Let's go back to our equation. So we need D. We have D squared uh, when theta is too high to agree. So d squared is 180 minus 144 cosine of 2 pi. The cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. And so this is going to be 180 plus 72, I guess. This is 252. And what about, I know what the is. What about the pay is? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, okay. So let me ask you this. Let's okay. How fast does a minute hand spin around that clock? How long does it take a minute hand to do a lap? One hour. Everybody agree, everybody agree with that? And how many radians are there in one hour? Sorry, that was stupid. How many radians are there in one lap? Two pi, right? So the minute hand rotation 
the minute hand does two pi radians per hour. Agree? How about the hour hand? How long does it take the hour hand to do a line? At least 12 hours, the hour hand. Everybody agree with me? So the hour hand is actually two pi radians for 12 hours. Two pi radians every 12 hours. So this is pi over six radians per hour. Oh, and that makes sense, right? Imagine from midnight until one in the morning, right? That's gone 30 degrees in that hour, which is exactly what this is. So that makes sense. Let me ask you another question. Let's suppose that I run 10 miles an hour and you run 15 miles an hour behind me. How fast are you catching up? So I'm running 10 miles an hour. You're behind me some ways. You're running 15 miles an hour. From my perspective, how fast are you catching up? You're catching up to me at five miles an hour. Agree? And it's the same thing will reverse. If you're in front of me running 15 miles an hour and I'm behind you running 10 miles an hour, you're getting ahead of me at a five miles an hour. Same principle here. By the way, at eight o'clock, do you think that angle is getting bigger or smaller? It's getting bigger, right? Because this is moving and this is moving, but this is moving faster, right? So d theta dt should be uh, the fast one uh, minus This is going, this is the one going 15 miles an hour. This is the one going 10 miles an hour. And so you subtract it, right? So this guy is going two pi radians per hour. This guy is going to solar pi over six. So how is this angle changing? This is 12 pi over six, so it's 11 pi over six radians per hour. Right at eight o'clock. That's how much that angle moves. So you've now got everything. <coughs> All right. Seventy two. Sine of two pi over three over d, which is the square root of two fifty two um, times eleven pi over six. Whatever this is, this is something like this is actually radical three over two. So this is like 36 radical 3 over radical 252 times 11 pi 6. And this should be inches per hour. By the way, you don't need to see the five this is perfectly good. Let me ask you a question. Does this make sense? Um, not the number so much. I mean, we kind of ballpark this. This is like um, eh, roughly 15, and this is so this is two radical three, this is roughly uh, six. Yeah, so about that many inches per hour. That's that's ballpark. But at eight o'clock, do you think the distance between them so the hands are getting bigger or smaller? They should be moving farther apart. I agree with that because if you change it a little bit, this moves more than this. And so this distance should actually have grown 
And that's a positive answer. So at least we know we've got that. Any questions on that? Okay. Any, uh, Let me give you all a problem. It was when you work by yourself or among yourself. Uh, I don't care, but I, I want you to practice this before we take quiz on it. Uh, two cars, stars. At the same time, uh, and drive in different directions. The first car. Uh, goes. 60 miles per hour uh, due east. Car two uh, goes 50 miles per hour uh, due northwest. <coughs> Change after two hours. So, right at the two hour mark, how fast is the distance? So, see if you can figure that out. Take a few minutes to get that one worked out and holler at me if you reach an impasse the inner. See if I can do it too.
So six month round of bargaining of course, 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 of Yeah, this one is when he was one of these because that that I need to talk about. Well, so do more class. This is more class. It should be put up as tiny. So hopefully we should have put it on it. Yes.
So here's a bit to make sure that we cut up this. This is the situation you got here. You've got one car down this way, one car going back Our car goes 60 miles per hour doing this. Somebody interpret that. 60 miles per hour doing this. What does that mean? Given my label. Okay, so change that back to time to 60 miles per hour. Right? I like this other statement about car two. What's that? And notice I've drawn an angle on there. That angle does not change the problem progression, right? Because the first car is always going to east, the second car is always going northwest. So that angle doesn't change. Quest, what is our quest here? <laughs> Given the way that I've drawn this diagram, what will it look? You're looking at uh, the SBT after two hours, right? Agree? But the, the after two hours is not directly helpful, it's indirectly. I really need some stuff that involves crap I've got written up already. After two hours, At the two hour mark, what are X and Y? Wait, X must be 120, Y must be 100. Do I agree with that? Because the car can go 60 miles an hour for two hours. So at the two hour mark, that X is going to have grown to 120 miles. And at the two hour mark, the Y will have grown to 100 miles. But so here's what I know so far. I know the X and Y and Y. I'm looking for the S and T. So it smells like I need an equation that involves S, X, and Y. Is so Here's what the game is. Who needs to see you? I said, uh, do northwest, but not this must be a 45 degree angle, right? and this is 90. So, Yeah, I think it's exactly what you can do. Yes, but uh, so here's a, I like your question. Um, so remember what I've got recorded there in red at two hour mark, the distance is 120 and 100 respectively, right? A good rule of thumb in these related range problems is so this is the instant where I want to know this is changing. It is a good rule of thumb. Do not think about plugging in numbers until after you've taken a derivative. And almost all these problems are going to take a derivative at some point. 
Do not plug in numbers before you do that, unless you know everything is fixed in the problem. I, after you plug in the variables, that, that would be the appropriate time to put in the numbers. Mm -hmm. By the way, I sit on the syllabus, but I don't allow you to use calculators on the exam. Uh, the truth of the matter is, I don't care if you use a scientific calculator or a scientific calculator app on your phone if they're easy to download, but you don't need it. Right? I don't care about you getting numerical things. But the square root of 61, actually, that's a better answer than any decimal you write. It's technically correct because the square root of 61 is not a rational number. Uh, so just leave it that way. I, I don't care about something like that. But if it makes you feel better to have a calculator, or I'll give you another alternative, I will calculate any numbers you want for it.
this one here. Well, the name is always not going to be perhaps there is here. Okay, so So what is that? Well, so here's a good thing. And this is good for kind of engineering and stuff like this. If you've got an answer, you put the ball apart. Think about this. How fast is that line changing? Always 110 miles an hour. Do I agree with that? One car going due east, one car due west, the distance is going to change at 110 miles an hour. 110 miles per hour. Great. Will the distance here be changing faster or slower? Slower. Everybody agree with that? It's got to be more than 60, but it's got to be less than 110. I am sure that's what's going to happen. I'm going to finish this one off. What is an appropriate? So, as we spoke of earlier, what we need is the equation involves x's and y's and x's, right? And I'm thinking I'm going to go with that law of cosines right there. So, I get s squared is x squared plus y squared minus 2xy cosine 5 pi. I'm going to clean this up a little bit because cosine of 5 power 4 is minus 1 over the of 2. So I get S squared Uh, I actually got this right. Uh, in the next, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, I think the power of two plus five. Well, my cosine is still correct. That's also the cosine. Thank you. Any questions? This is kind of this is my fundamental equation, if you will, in this triangle that um, relates S and X to Y. So let's D, D, X, X. Or D, 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 X, X. Okay, so what do I have to do when taking a derivative of this? This is probably right. So uh, I get radical 2, the x and t, and y. Radical 2, x, y, and t. 
Everybody okay with it? So far. So this is my fundamental sort of derivative equation. Now notice I haven't plugged in any numbers, and that's what I mean by you got to be super careful. You usually don't want to plug in numbers to like the main derivative. Yes. You mean like take s to the square root of it? Okay, you can do that, right? But at the end of the day, you want to know what the s and p is, right? So you have to take the derivative. Now, if you have S is the square root of this. I'm just going to do that because it's, it's just a mess, right? It, you certainly can, but I would avoid it. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. I know everything about X and Y in the following sense. I know what X is, that my crucial mark is 100, uh, 120, Y is 100, the X and T is 60, Y and T is 50. But I'm missing S. Well, I can go back to this equation here. When X is, uh, what is it, 120, and Y is 100, then, and now I am going to take a square root here. I get 120 squared. 100 squared of radical 2 times 120 times 100. This is 14,100 plus 10,000 plus uh, 12,000 radical 2. So S is the square root of. 24,400 plus 2x, x t plus 2y, y t, right for 2, uh, dx to t y, x t y t over 2s. Right. And so put the numbers in. Two times the square root of two thousand four hundred plus twelve thousand times two, and in the top I get two times x, which is one hundred and twenty. X is equal to sixty, and I get uh, two hundred two times. Uh, 150 plus radical 2. The x to t is 60 times 100. And x to y to t, that's going to be 120 plus 5, it's also 6,000. So this is actually done here. Uh, but just for your interest, that's 7200 in uh, data plus 10,000. Uh, actually, Oh, no. 2x is 240. This is 14,000 plus 10,000 
And notice this is 24,400 uh, of gratitude. That's not a coincidence. This is actually one half times the square root of 24,100 is 12,000. And if you work this out, this is about 101.7. And notice that that is a number that's bigger than 60, but it's not quite as big as 110. So this kind of makes sense. But at this point right here, you're good to go. Uh, when you're working on a test, you probably don't have the time for it. When you're working on homework and stuff, look at trains. This is important as an engineer or scientist. Look at trains. Does this make sense? Right? That's usually a good gut check. Uh, I'm not sure what you're doing. Uh, holds water. Okay, any questions? Yes. Ah, I pulled them off in here. Yes. Great. to I guess I'm confused about. So they're telling me that we could fire the board. Yes. How did they get that? Oh, I Same thing. That's the same thing as square root four. One by top and bottom by that two. Yes. Because theta is the only one that sticks, right? It's the only one that doesn't move, right? The other x's and y's, they vary. That's a great question, right? Make sure that I knew because of this problem, one car is always going uh, east, one of them is always going northwest, that theta is unchanged. Oh, you mean if you just let me co sign it? I don't know if this is correct numerically, but yeah, if you leave the co sign in there, that's fine. But you know what you can ask me? I'll, I'll, I'll give you five. Others? Yes. Okay, so I've got a quiz for you today that I want you to practice on, and I want you to take home if uh, when we're done and see if you can uh, work through the problems by the review session time. But here it is for now. And let me say something about the quiz before I get us started on this. <clears throat> 